<laughs> you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire Eucharistic community, and I'm one of your hosts, Wanzo. And I'm your other host, John Paul Malek. Together we are Robrick. How's every single one of you? It is Wednesday, so it's about to, we have to talk about the Wednesday Night Wars. So that's where we're going to be reviewing NXT. Paul, it was a pretty good show. Like you said, a lot of good stuff going on. We have like the Dusty Classic open up. So the, we had a few matches from that. Also, we have some of the participants for the Dusty Classic on the women's side. So a lot of things happening in NXT. And I think the yellow brand at least gave us something that is, is a, has a passing grade. Yeah, this show was was pretty decent, especially what we've seen past couple weeks. The Dusty Classic, you know, I love tag team wrestling. The Dusty Classic almost always delivers each and every year. And, you know, with, I think they said 16 teams, it's going to yeah. be a really big tournament, which I like. It's not like, oh, yeah, eight teams, two weeks and done. No, it's going to be a long tournament. It's going to be good. We saw the debut of MSK or, you know, for our Impact fans, the Rascals. So that was really cool to see that. I'm, I'm hoping that they make it to the finals. But this episode of NXT overall, like you said, if I got to be Julius Jean-Paul Caesar, I give it the thumbs up. That's right. That's right, Julius Jean-Paul Caesar. So thank you so very much, family, for being with us, for the subscriptions, for comments. Every single one, Stephen Butler. There's another, like, more people. Like, I'm sorry if I forget the names, but thank you for giving us an opportunity to be. And I think Rated R, Re- Rated R Wrestling, shout them out. Or wrestling, there you go. Rated, Rated, R, yeah. Rated R Superstars Wrestling, there you go. So don't forget, guys, you know, help us out, like, also, like, like supporting the video for the Monday Night Raw review, you know, Alexa Bliss, far as back at Randy Orton, right there, you guys have the picture, anything else is needed to say, you know, Triple H was like the one that saved the show, so, you know, like Monday Night Raw always has like something kind of cool, but in the end, everything else is absolutely crap, so you know, don't forget to check that out, Jean-Paul and myself give you an overall whole run of the whole show, so you know, Jean-Paul, um, this show opened up with like Candice LeRae against Shotzi, ow, 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 ow. I mean, you said it. If she doesn't win, you know, if Candice doesn't win, we don't. Why? Why is this needed? You know, there's no reason to have this feud. And I, I think that, like you said, the way is actually really like shaky right now. He's going through rookie like roads. You know, not really everybody's invested in it. And you know, Gargano has gold, but aside of that, anybody else has gold. If Candice will have gold, it will be better. So, what do you think about this match? Yeah, I mean, everything you said, I agree with. This was set up where if Candice loses. It's like, man, they're really trying to every way to bury, you know, the way. And it's just, you need to have all of them win. And this was a pretty good match. I'm a fan of Candice LeRae. I know some people are indifferent on her and Shotzi and their styles and stuff. But I like Candice more than Shotzi. So I was glad to see she got the win here because you really need to get her over. Shotzi's one of those that she's the fan favorite. You know, a lot of people like her. But I, I've been saying it for a while. She's not the current. She's the future. Like, Candace is the one who's been there for how long? You need to get her over. Well, Shotzi has the whole her whole future ahead of her in NXT. But, you know, yeah. Candace, like I said, been there for a while. Let's get her over. So I was glad to see, you know, her get the win. I, it was the spitting neck breaker from the top. From the top. But, yeah, yeah, which I, yeah, yeah. And this, and this was a, you know, they gave this match some time, which I appreciate. And, you know, it was really good. Of course, you said to see Indy Hartwell come in and Shotzi just blows her away like she's a fly. You know, so it's like, okay. And, <laughs> and I could easily see, you know, Indy Hartwell losing to Shotzi Blackheart maybe some kind of feud I know you know uh, Shotzi she talked later on she's going to be in the Dusty Rhodes classic for the women so is Candice and Indy so don't be surprised if we see Shotzi and her partner which we'll get to in a little bit go up against the way and probably you know get the win back there yeah for this right now I was glad to see Candice get the win Oh, yeah, she needed it, you know, finally, at least. You know, Candice should be portrayed like that, and you know, like you said, if he, if he wasn't the champion, I would much rather see Candice with gold. But EO is EO, so, you know, we got to be biased a little bit. She's fine with the championship. Sorry, Candice. So this is what we're going to have. You know, these three matches are going to be like the beginning for the Dusty Classic, and the Spirit of Robert Sanguin as the main event. Ever Rise and Grace Your Veterans is coming next, and then MSK, like you said, and everybody's wondering who will that was. You know, John Paul already, he told me, he actually delivered the news, he's like, it's the Rascals, I'm like, okay, that's legit, you know, I didn't actually notice it, John Paul did, so kudos to John Paul, and, you know, like, let's go to, like, uh, the next segment, we got to see these guys coming back, Pat McAfee's not there anymore, so, like, I guess he's gonna be sidelining from NXT, I don't know if, like, 
they renew his contract, something like that. I, I remember. Well, I heard that. rumors that like they don't want to overexpose him. They don't want him to be on TV every week. It's like, how about you treat the rest of your roster like that? Yes, you know, and you don't overexpose right? them. So then, when we see them, they feel special. I guess they they only want Pat McAfee to feel special. Everybody yeah. else can just feel like you know generic. I guess <laughs> it's true. But like what did Jean Paul and I said, you know, uh, we said it like last week, and also he had the idea. He's like the main feud is not carrying. Have carrying Wade. You know, he has. He's gonna have his time. But for now you know, mixed up the British guys, you know, so like the prince came out and the prince is right there talking and he's like, oh, well, Kyle O'Reilly, you know, like, oh, you said you thought that you were going to beat me. No, you're not going to beat me. And now you're the one that is eating his meals from the straw. So that was good. I, I like that line. And also like the line is like from the cloth that I was made, they, they don't make them anymore. Yeah, and I like how he said, like, the new logo, like, you see the X over the C, you know, on the Prince, and he has the X on his Finn Balor logo on his t-shirt now, new t-shirt, and he said, like, I have this big red X on me because, you know, X marks the spot, this is what everybody's shooting for, they're shooting for the champ and the championship, and that's what I'm the want. target, right? That's what yeah. He said. yeah, yeah, so it was, it was good, and then, like you said, Pete Downing interrupts, so then they start talking, and pretty much says, I want a shot for the title. So he's saying, hey, you know, you have that title because uh, you haven't given me a chance, like an opportunity. So I like that because, like you said, these guys is going to give us a really great match. And, you know, he came out with, like, only Lorcan, Danny Birch, and then they start feuding. They start jumping Finn Balor, which I don't know if that makes sense. But, like, didn't you, like, hate a little bit, like, how, like, he was actually overpowering three men? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I would have liked it where, I don't know, they just, maybe they just said something. They had a stare down. And then they teased that they were going to beat him up. And then they were like, oh, no, no. And like, you know, you play it cool. You're like, no, like, you're like, you're small time. The three of us could easily kick your ass. We'll let you go now, champ. And they just kind of walk away. Exactly. But, you know, it, it was all just to set up for what we would later see in the main event. So, you know, I don't know. I, I really didn't like that. But I mean, at least I would rather see the champ look strong versus the champ kind of look, you know, just get his ass kicked. Oh well, yeah, like yeah. So that that yeah, I, I don't know. I was indifferent. I was like, eh, whatever. It's NXT. I guess people love run ins and beat downs and all that stuff. I don't know. Well, yeah, like you said. Well, the one thing is also Kyle O'Reilly came out, so mm -hmm. he's like, he's gonna. He came out to the aid of Finn Balor, so he started like feuding with like these three guys. So like, Pete down right away, start attacking, and he got taken out really fast. And Finn Balor, like you guys can see, is like done. And then we're not the end done by Pete Dunn, and then the end of there came out. And so, like, this is what we see. And like you said, this is going to be setting up, like, a bigger feud. Like, because this thing is not over yet. Because remember what we saw in War Games. The end of mm -hmm. they are going against Dunn and Lorcan and Birch. So that was kind of, like, what we what we have right there. And like you said, it's setting up for, like, Valor and Pete Dunn. So it's cool because they're going to wait on Carrion. So at least anybody and somebody understands that, like, that is a big marquee match. So that's mm -hmm. what it's kind well, of hey, I mean, we always joke that Triple H listens to us. So, you know, hey, maybe he's like, okay, WrestleMania weekend, carrying and Balor. And, and it's it. like, Robert, guys, you know, WrestleMania weekend, right. I got you. So good. I uh, Thank you, Triple H. I appreciate that. So now we're going to go to, like, Gargano. Johnny Gargano, like, and Dexter Loom is right there. Like, look at the, <laughs> he's doing the drawings, you know. A theory is actually laughing about that. He's like, look at, oh, he really made you good. And it's like, oh, there's one from you too. So like, <laughs> there you go. Like they were gonna, they were gonna have a match later on in the in the day. Oh, yeah. Tonight. I think the one with Austin Theory, he was getting kicked in the balls, and then Theory's like, that's bullshit, man. He's like, you better kick his ass. And <laughs> no, I, I we we gotta get Dexter Loomis to draw us. Oh yeah, yeah. Dexter Loomis. I mean, if, if, and you're saying the world K fame, he's really, really good. At no, I know that's that. actually him. Oh so, yeah, he, yeah, he's the legit artist. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, like, oh, on that yeah, then yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has to do Robert, you know, doing a die and all of that. So, we'll, Dexter, please do that for yeah, us. We, we don't want cameo because he won't say anything. So we'll yeah, pay him to draw. We will yeah. be paying, you know, 150 dollars for like you know 30 seconds of he's staring at our, our faces. So no, thank you. We don't want to do that. So you know, guys that also like we don't really want to actually like see them or like talk to them is that the Grill Jump veterans they kind of promo saying you know we're going to last year we're in the finals this year we're going to win it. And like you said, these guys are always being portrayed really good. You know, like they were the beginning of the NXT UK brand. They were the champions at some point over there too. So like they have a lot of stock. You said Shawn Michaels is a big fan of them. So they have a match with Ever Rice. And this match was okay. You know, I think that like they gave us a pretty good tag team action. At the beginning, like Ever Rice kind of got a little bit of the, the upper hand. But, you know, like so throughout the course of the match, then you saw like the girls, young veterans, got, you know, getting the, you know, get into themselves. And then they take him to... Mayhem, right? Yeah. So, then take it to Mayhem and done. So did you like this? I, I think it was good. I like that finisher, like you said. This team, I'm actually, when they wrestle, it, they're good. I like them. 
Yeah, yeah, I really like the Grizzled Young Veterans. I like them a lot, and I really wish that they were on NXT UK. Nothing against them being on here, being in the Dusty Classic. I don't think that they'll win it or, you know, go to the finals. I don't think that that'll be, you know, the matchup. I think maybe something will happen. You know, I don't know how the brackets are set up. I actually got to look at it again, but maybe, you know, you there needs to be some kind of feud for these two coming out of it. So maybe a feud of them versus Imperium. And then you can somehow carry both those teams over to NXT UK and leave them there where they belong. Cause Walter and Wolf need, you know, Eichner and Bartel. Like we need all of Imperium together, you know, get these two guys. Cause then NXT UK will really be loaded up. And, oh yeah. You know, that's and- never a bad thing. But when I see ever rise every week, when I see him, yeah, here's the brackets. When I see ever rise every week, I'm like, man, these guys have to be a parody of the young bucks. Oh, yeah. There's no way that yeah. WWE books these guys the way they make them so over the top and posing, and they're like, "We're the best team ever!" Oh my, yeah, like we're the best. I'm like, hey, "This has got to be a Young Bucks like parody." Like you said, though, yeah, you you have the picture like really clear in your head because that's what it is. It's just like they hate the Young Bucks, you know? They don't want to go to WWE. Oh, you know? oh no, the Imperium's over there. No, then okay, I don't want to see that because then that would have to be in the finals. I don't want to <laughs> see Imperium versus Grizzled Young Veterans in the finals. Yeah, well, yeah, Imperium. Yeah, yeah, actually, they're gonna go to the Lucha House party, as you guys can see, Maverick and Killian Dane are there, MSK, Brisango, Tony Nese, and I, uh, I, Ara Daibari, oh my gosh, you know, some, some tag teams are not, you know, that, that yeah, so, so some teams, you know, like, okay, I know who's winning this match. Yeah, they were meant to be job, yes, so yes. like, not look like Argano and Loomis, and like you said, this match was actually really, really good, I enjoyed the interactions between the two men, like, they, they were, like, they were pretty intense, and you know, like, Gargano is pretty good at like like telling your story in the ring and Loomis because the fact that he doesn't able he doesn't talk at all is actually good when it comes to matches like this. So I, I like this for what it was, you know, We're like and, and if Loomis loses, there's not really like any implications because he, it's it's fine, you know, like he doesn't have to win all the time. Yeah, for me, I mean, the, the match itself was was good and up until you know maybe the last. I would say 10 seconds of the match, but I really like Loomis as a wrestler, like his style. I wish he wouldn't try to do so much like dives and stuff more wrestling, you know, like when Vince McMahon said to Keith Lee, like you got to go to school and learn how to wrestle like a big man. Dexter Loomis should do that too. He can still do the leap frogs and all the other stuff he wants, but you know, maybe slow it down, use that, you know, big size and power he has more often than trying to be agile, like a Gargano or Kushida or somebody like that. But I mean, the match itself was good. I really like Gargano. I feel the problem with Gargano is he always wrestles like a baby face. Yeah. You know, like he doesn't wrestle like a heel. Because when you watch him, you always think of like NXT, you know, TakeOver Philadelphia with Almas, you know, like all, you know, his whole feud with Adam Cole, all these legit Cole, matches. Yeah. And yeah. But it's all, he wrestles the same as a heel. He doesn't so cheat like, too much. That's yeah, he doesn't problem. cheat. The only thing he cheats is when at the end of this thing, when you see Austin Theory jump up on the apron and uh, that Loomis pulls him in with the silence, which is like a bullshit name for the choke. But you know, so he has him in that, and he's yeah. choking him out. And then the, Kame, right? I love yeah, that. yeah, that's that's way more legit. But um, I, now I sound like Excalibur. I gotta call it the Japanese name. But you know, then but the the ref just stands there and goes, "Yeah, that's fine." That this guy's on the apron, jumps in the ring, all this other shit. I mean, I know Loomis pulled him in, but the ref should have been like, "No, you know, I don't know, ring the bell, do something," because it's like Loomis losing. Okay, yeah, I know it was clearly there was involvement. Clearly, it wasn't a clean win by Gargano, but you know, technically, the ref didn't call it. So, by the books, Gargano won clean. So, yeah. what's Loomis's case for another match for the North American title? So, it is, yep. And you know, you saw the implications because of the help of Austin Theory right there. He's like, start mm-hmm. applying the silence. Oh, <laughs> like, no, no, let's do it like the Hanukkah right there. And like, you know, Gargano starts to attack uh, Loomis. He pulls like Theory out of the way, but out of nowhere, Kushida shows up. So that was good. I, I like, you know, Kushida being right there. And we said it. That, like, that's the next field for Johnny Gargano right there. You know, like he starts beating him up. He applies his like submission hold. Gargano actually tapped to that. So like, you I know, mean, the, hover, the hoverboard lock. Yeah. And then that's the whole the whole reason why I was like annoyed with the Dexter Loomis thing. It's because if this is the next feud and OK, you're going to put the belt on Kushida. Like that's what like, like let's say that's what their plan is. Then did you really need to have Dexter Loomis lose this match and look like an idiot? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, like I, it could have just been like a DQ, and then Kushida came down, and you still could have had all this stuff, and you and know, you Loomis would have looked a little better. Good. Yes, yes, yeah, I agree with you. I don't know why, like, but like you know, he he put the championship right next to Argano, and he he talking Japanese. He's pretty much saying, hey, you know, I'm coming after you. You know, just be be sure that you're. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that. So let's go to something that to me is a few that like uh, doesn't have any of my interest. I want your thoughts on this. It's Tommaso Ciampa and Gregory Thatcher. 
they had like a like a promo, like they were sitting down with Way Barrett and they were talking about the fight pit because it's gonna happen next week. And every time that like Thatcher speaks, he's like, I think I, I you know, like I'm either like I have some kind of like I don't want I don't want he's a he's not easy to understand at least for me. Like he talks like like he's really slow, and I don't know if I like that coming from a technical wrestler. You know what I mean? Like I think he should iterate a lot better, at least for me. It's this feud is so weird because I liked it when it was Thatcher and Riddle. I don't know if that was the contrast in the characters where it's like Thatcher was like he came off as like the badass and Riddle, of course, was like, you know, bro. And yeah, like the fun loving. And this is like, OK, now you have Thatcher trying to be a badass. But the past couple of weeks, you had him look like a pussy. And you have Tommaso Ciampa, who you portray as the ultimate badass. So then yeah. it's like, oh, okay, now he looks like even more of a pussy sitting here at the sit-down. And Thatcher tried to say, you know, this is my world. This is the fight pit. There's no ropes. There's no tap-outs. There's no... And then Ciampa just interrupts him. Oh, this is where you're going to tell me the rules? This is when you're supposed to try to intimidate me, make me scared? And then, yeah, Thatcher, like, so... So Thatcher, mean, Thatcher, Thatcher, Thatcher looked like a pussy in this whole feud, this whole build-up. He looked like a pussy in the sit-down, and he's probably going to lose. So, like, you just... Let's just dig dig the hole and bury him. That's all yes. you're doing. That's my thing. Is like every time he he had to like have a comeback, nothing. Oh, okay. And then that's how he okay. Yeah, you know, man. Well, I think it's because his teeth are like his teeth well, are like this. Instead dentist, of straight, they look like that. Yeah, yeah. Go to the dentist, get him fixed, and you know, let's have actually a good. You know, let's have well, a NXT good would be maybe if they would. You know, he probably has to like earn a win for his pay to go up. So he yeah, hasn't won it. I all. mean, then please, you know, get a win. <laughs> let's see that what's going to happen in the fight pit is going to happen next week. So you know, there you go. Let's go to the next match. MSK, like I said, Jean Paul already like told me who was going to be, but like everybody, like, who are they? Who are they? Turn out to be like he said, the Rascals, right there. Boom, the debut of the Rascals, or like right here, MSK. And their names changed because like that's Saber and also Wentz, but that was where the impact. And now WWE changed their names. Also, if you guys want to know, Wentz, the guy in the right, that's uh, Kimberly's husband. And now they're going to be Wesley and Nash Carter. There you go. Yeah, it's, instead of like his his first name isn't Wesley, it's Wes, and then his last name is Lee. So and it's like I'm like really like that's yeah. how lazy you are. You took one <laughs> name and made it two. Yes, yeah, you know, that, that's what it is. So, like, I mean, but the match with Isaiah Swerve Scott and also Jay Gatlin was good, though. I, I, you told me it was your favorite match, and I agree with yes. you. Good tag team action between both teams. I like that. This match, to me, was the match of the night. This MSK, if, if they don't win it, they need to be in the finals. Because you can get a team over, even if you lose in the finals of this, whatever. Like, you can still get over. You can still, like, as long as you make it there, put on great matches, you know, get the fans behind you. And I think this was the right move for them. You know, going to AEW, they would have been completely lost. Look at the acclaimed. The yeah. acclaimed debut, lose, 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 lose. MSK debuts, they win in a fantastic match. Um, I actually thought they were going to lose. I don't know. Like dude, that spot when the Swerve Scott did that, like or, uh, Jake Alice did the airplane spin and, and then oh, Scott yeah. did the 450. Yeah. And then uh, who who is it? It's not a, uh, it's not Wes. Who, what's the other one? No, the other, the other guy, the other guy is Carter. Yeah. Nash when, Carter. When, Carter, when Nash Carter came in and he broke that up at like a 2.9, it was like a Kurt Angle kick out. I mean, it was like, it, you know, that's when I, that's moments like that is when you get into it. Yes. That's when you get it when you're in a match like, okay, and you, you get hyped up and you do the ultimate warrior and you're like, okay, like, here we go. But, you know, this was really good. Their, their finisher to me, I mean, at least after that airplane spin 450, the MSK, which is the name of their finisher and the tag team, you know, they hit on Swerve Scott for the win. I thought like the other teams, you know, uh, tag team duo move, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if that's their if finisher because they're not an actual tag team. But, you know, I thought that looked more devastating than the MSK. But the right team won here. This was a fantastic the MSK, this is, the MSK was like a neck breaker, right? It was like something or like a blockbuster into like yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, like he holds him and then, yeah, like he flips over like a blockbuster neck like breaker blockbuster, type thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's what it was. But, I mean, like you said, good debut for, like, the Rascals or MSK. Mm -hmm. We don't know where Trey Miguel is going to be. Trey Miguel will actually was taking time off, be with his family. Supposedly one of his relatives is sick, so he wants to spend yeah, some time. Maybe, maybe he'll show up in uh, in, in uh, at AEW. You know, maybe they like, hey, let's go separate ways. Let's conquer the wrestling world kind yeah. of deal. Yeah, and like you said, Trey Miguel was, like, push also an impact. Remember the last pay-per-view that he had? He was actually lobbying for the championship opportunity. So that was good. We'll see what happens on that. But the good debut, and like you said, finally some tag teams. 
So that's important. And tag, people that are actually a specialist on tag teams. That's good. Now let's go on to the girl side. Like they were a lot of a lot of the participants were revealed on the girl side, and we're going to see Casey Catanzaro and Kaden Carter going against Tony Storm and Cedric Martinez. We also going to see um, who we're going to see. Help me out. Uh, Candice LeRae and uh, Indy Hartwell. I, I are they going against? Um, oh yeah, Scotty yeah, yeah. Blackheart yeah. and her partner. Would she? Thank reveal? you so very much for that yeah. because we're going to see this. This two also are going to be in a team. You know, Shotzi Blacker and Amber Moon. So, like you said, like if I want to win, I need everything. You know, I, I want my best friend or somebody that went to war with me. And there you go, is Amber Moon. So they put these two together. Are they believable? Yes. They are baby faces. Yes. Shotzi needs somebody to fight against. You know, Larray and Indy. And like you said, this is going to be the perfect opportunity for these two to go over. So I think that's the right call on that. They only revealed these four teams. I don't know if their tournament is going to have more teams, but so far I think it's going to be okay. And, you know, these two, the Casey and also Kaden, they got a promo. They were saying, oh, we're always being overlooked throughout all of our careers. And I know that, like, Tony and Mercedes are really good. But, you know, hey, keep overshadowing. You know, keep, like, underestimating us because that's going to get us the win, actually. Yeah, and, I mean, that's, you know, for, for this man trip you have here on the screen, I mean, good, you know, good, decent promo by the babyface team, you know, m giving you a little bit of believability into them having a chance to win. But are they really going to beat Tony Storm, Mercedes Martinez? No. But yeah. for, the, for the other thing, uh, with uh, I, to be honest, I forgot Ember Moon was on NXT. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with when it, when it, Ember, I was I'm like, who the hell's got her partner? I'm like Io Shirai. I'm like, uh, I'm like who else was? I'm like, oh, I, I literally couldn't even remember who was on the team at War Games. I'm like, yeah, Io, and like uh, who else was on? Then there's like, oh yeah, and then Ember showed up, and I'm like, you know, we'll see. It's almost like an after an afterthought because you know, then you had Raquel cut a promo. She said, "Oh, I'm coming after Io." Mercedes is coming after Io. Ember said it. It's like they have too many. You know, women and they don't know what to do with them. Which, yeah. right, you know, that, that's that's, that's, a, that's never a bad problem when you have too many women and you don't know what to do with them. But in wrestling, you know, it's a little different. Is that is absolutely right? You know, she said like Raquel says she's the baddest bitch on NXT. So we'll see what happens. But like you said, she won. Uh, she won over Rhea. So technically, she mm -hmm. should be the number one contender. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think her and Dakota are probably going to be a team. I would say this tournament is probably going to, the women's is going to be eight teams. I don't see them having 16 teams like the men. I don't think they have 30 yeah, they women. Have yeah, so I would say, you know, eight teams, which I think would be good. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's go really quick to Zia Lee. Zia Lee had a match. Well, did she really have a match? I think it was a pretty much a two-second bro. But she still looks so dominant. Like, it's all this training, all this suffering that she went through. Really good stuff. Then she fight another, like, jobber or, or, or enhanced mentality. There you go. You guys mm -hmm. want me to, like, yeah, say... Yeah, let's be nice. Yeah, we'll be Yeah, nice. let's be a lot nicer. And there you go. It was, what, a spinning heel kick? Right there. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right there. Like, really to the chest. And devastating. One, two, three. Zaya gets the win right there. Boom. Like you said, she's looking dominant. I like the entrance, how like she has like the, the bow, right? And then she starts like, mm -hmm. like swinging and all of that. And it's like, oh, da. good. But like you said, like still, what is the intriguing part of it is like, who's that person? Who's that mask? Well, man or woman, who's that the one that is actually the trainer or like the master or whatever, the coach of Zaya Lee. So that's interesting for me, at least. Yeah, you know, this, it was good. And this is what we, I said, I want to see from her. Don't give me like a match that's contested. Don't give me, you know, let her go in there. Boom. Kick somebody's ass. The only time it should be a contested match is if you put her in there with like a name. And I'm not saying like a Shotzi Blackheart or Casey Carter. Or, uh, uh, yeah, like Caden Carter. No, Caden like Carter, you put yeah. her in there with like a Tony Storm. Then, then you can give me a match that goes longer than 30 seconds. But otherwise, you know, everything that you did with Zia Lee these past couple weeks, you got to portray her looking good. And after the match, you know, she beat down this poor, like we said, enhancement talent. I didn't catch her name, whether they said it or not, I'm not sure. But no, they, they, they didn't say it, actually. Yeah, she, like, yeah, she, you know, she beat her down, had her in the ropes, you know, kicking her, punching her, all this stuff, and, you know, just really looking dominant. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I think, you know, it needs to go to NXT Championship match. Whether she wins it or not, you know, is is whatever, but and I think it also, needs to get there. Say? I'm sorry that I'm cutting you off, but like, what did you say? Another woman that is going to lobby for a championship opportunity. So you mm -hmm. have like, you you could easily do elimination chamber with all these women, and then one of them will get the championship because you know, Zaya. What is what can you do if you don't give her an opportunity if she's being portrayed this good? So yeah, that, exactly. that's a problem that you have. But like next week, Grand Metal League and Lynn Silverado, our guys, you know, our Lucha House Party against Imperium. That's like, that's like, I'm sorry, Lucha House Park. 
<laughs> they're not you're not gonna go over that no but and, i think i think if they you know if they give them time i think it'll be a really good match though yeah and i do like how lucha house party is in nxt and i you know when you look at the brackets it's like don't be surprised though because i think in the bracket underneath them which would be you know the second match if lucha house party wins and legato del fantasma wins I believe that, yeah, you can see right there, they might meet in the next round. So don't be surprised if Lucha House Party gets the upset win on Imperium. That would be, yeah. And uh, you said it, Legado against Lucha will be a cool, it will be a good storyline. So, yeah. Um, yeah, good booking right there, Paul. Right there, boom. Kushida and Leo Roth going against Gargano and Austin Theory. So I'm thinking this is going to be for Kushida and Leo Roth. I think, you know, that will solidify the feud. And he's like, okay, next time we meet, it's going to be for the North American Championship. At least for me. If they want to make it more screwy and you have the way over, just give it to Gargano in theory. But yeah. I would say maybe Kushida and Ruff, you know? I would, And then for that one, again, I got to counter you. I'm thinking that the baby faces are going to lose. Maybe they beat the shit out of Leon Ruff, you know, kind of just... Because you're not going to beat Kushida, and, like, really bad and then expect to see him in a feud. But, you know, you beat down Leon Ruff, maybe Kushida, oh, I'm fighting for the title, I'm going to avenge him, you know, all this stuff. And I think the way needs to win. Because if they lose... And Candice and Indy lose, like we said, they'll probably lose the first round. They're, 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 losing, their good. Way. they're losing yeah. their way. Yeah. So let's go to the main event. Uh, well, there was, there was also a promo by Karen Cross. That was good. Scarlett was actually like reading like the cards. You know, yeah, the tarot reading, cards. Yeah. Yeah. So like she was reading that, and then you know talking about like how she took care of Damon Priest, and also like uh, now the Prince, and then at the end TikTok. So okay, good stuff. And Scarlett looks always like you know hot, and like now we're reading the cards and all of that. That was actually good. I like that. So mm -hmm. there you go. So main event time, you know, Undisputed against Brisango. Good match, but like always Paul says, it, it's like 10 minutes and on top of that commercial break, am I going to be able to get up behind this? Not too much, but like, you know, they gave us something decent. We knew that Brisango and Undisputed era, there was absolutely no chance. Although, at, you know, the last moments of the match, I thought, okay, maybe an upset win, but um, you know, unfortunately that wasn't the case. It was just Undisputed era throughout the whole time. What do you yeah. think? And I think, you know, Dev Undisputed Era win here is the right choice. You got to have them go into the tournament. They're another team that shouldn't be in the finals unless they're, you know, which again, I, I know you brought it up a couple times, but I forget the bracket. I can do it for you. I mean, I can yeah, like, let's see here. Which which side are they on? Oh, they're oh, on that side. See, then I can yet. see if you, do if you do Undisputed Era versus MSK in the finals and they put over MSK, then I'm good. Oh, but yeah. otherwise, otherwise, I don't want to see Undisputed Era in the finals because they, they got to put MSK over. They don't, yeah. I don't want to see them in the finals and they win it and it's, ah, uh, duh, we won again. No, like, I mean, Undisputed Era, I love them. They're legit, all four guys. Please be in NXT, your entire WWE run. But they don't need to win everything all the time. Yeah. Let, you know, let, let's get this young team over because we said the tag division has been suffering in NXT. You bring in a brand new team, young, you know, athletic, good team. Get them over, have them win this thing. But, you know, back to this match, it was really good. Like I said, I, there was no way Breezango was going to win the thing. I wish there wasn't all the interference, all the bullshit. Like, yeah, okay, this yeah. picture here. Yeah, I mean, because it, it, it really didn't do anything for the match. It's not like they came out and Undisputed Era lost, because then at least it would have meant something. You know, it was just like, okay, then you see O'Reilly come out and then Balor and they're all fighting and it's all this bullshit. But then, you know, yeah, Breezango, he's on the top rope and he goes to, for his leg drop, Adam Cole, super kick, you know, pin him one, two, three. Yeah, no, like you said, it's like, if, if at least it would have turned out different and then, they, you know, Breezango would have went over, then yeah, he's like, oh, the interference makes sense. But with this, it doesn't make any sense because, like, okay, there's still one. <laughs> yeah, because I like, was that supposed to pop me to see all these guys come out and be fighting and all this shit? You know what would have popped me even more? Having a legit match. Oh, yeah. With no interference and, like, okay, a good, clean, legit tag team match. Yes, like you said. And, like, this is, like, the last page, you know, on this video, Adam Cole and Strong came to the save of Kyle O'Reilly because he got a, a knee strike on, like, onto his face from courtesy of Pete Dunn. And right there, that's the... the the picture that we have for the end you know like these three guys going staring out the prince o'reilly and adam cole and Roderick strong so like they see this is going to still be a feud and like you said maybe pat mcafee returns maybe i'm not i'm not saying that he will but like now i think it's done against finn Balor. that's going to be the main story and, yeah, and, and to me like i don't know what their plans are how they want to build this thing or how they want to stretch it out to carry in but i would do finn Balor versus pete dunn and then after that, I'd probably do Finn Balor versus Pat McAfee if you're going to bring him back. I think that'll be a decent match. And it's like, okay, he takes out, you know, 
the top muscle of the group. Now he's got to take out the leader. And then by that point, maybe it'll be close to time. Okay, let's kick off the carrying feud. Yes, you know, it will be close to WrestleMania. That's what they will do. So pretty much that was the show that we have for you guys, family. Thank you so very much. You know, tomorrow Jean Paul is going to be with AW, everything that happened on so the New Year's match night two. And also you, he and I will be doing NXT UK, the show that actually steals every, the, everybody else's show. You know, we're going to have Trent Seven right there. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Hopefully he comes back. We'll see what happens on that. But like always, oh, we have a championship match. Also, we have uh, yeah. against A-Kid. So yeah, Walter be- against a-, a man. Yeah, the A man. Yeah, and the guy that doesn't speak English and all of that. So we'll see what happens on that. So family, thank you so very much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and bell for notifications. And where else they can find a social media? Yep. And then also don't forget to follow us on Rope Break on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, original Rope Break on Instagram, and like Juan had just said. So I'm going to tell it to you again. Go on YouTube, click subscribe, the original Rope Break, and turn on that bell. You will not be disappointed. So you and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, uh,